Welcome back, still TV3 New Day. And now let's shift our attention to a discussion that is very necessary. We're looking at the psychological effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, all across the world, countries, even including those that have been badly hit by the pandemic, have ordered their populations into total and partial lockdowns. And all this is to avert the possible and further spread of the virus a lot of people have lauded these governments for uh you know taking up such stringent measures now aside them there are also another group of people that are actively working researching on the possible psychological effects of the total shutdown and also of self-quarantine and these are the psychologists and so they have been asking questions wondering what could be the mental health challenges that could be posed based on people being in self-quarantine and also with the information that is going round about the virus and so we'll be speaking to um, a psychologist from the university of Ghana to find out more about the situation and of course what we can do to avert other mental challenges as well and she is Dr. Annabella let me get her full name right Dr. Annabella Osei Tutu she's on the line with us hello good morning doctor good morning thank you so much for joining us I hope you're well I'm doing well thank you all right so like I said we're discussing the psychological challenges of um, you know the coronavirus pandemic and first of all I really want to find out from you that generally what could be some of these challenges that could be uh, posed based on the pandemic itself okay thank you very much for the opportunity you're welcome um, as we all know this um pandemic or the related to COVID-19 is new to every one of us. Yeah. And so there's a lot of uncertainty about it. And so that increases, you know, our fear and our perception of risk. That is whether we ourselves are infected, whether we are going to be infected, whether we are going to infect loved ones, um, raises a lot of um, worry for us. And this can increase our stress level, our anxiety levels, and it can be um, immobilize us in a way. Okay. So these are the psychological um, aspects to this pandemic. All right. Now, speaking of, uh, you know, still on the pandemic, I'm asking that could it also be that the fake uh, news that is being shared all across social media could also even have further effect on us? Absolutely. We know that uh, media exposure... Um, can increase or even exacerbate our anxiety levels, partly because some of the presentations are sensationalized, they are inaccurate, and that increases our distracts. Which information should we rely on? Which yeah. one is true? And so that heightens our anxiety very much. Yes. Absolutely. Now, there's also this other worry. Now, I've seen a lot of people share their experiences on social media. You wake up one day and you're identifying some <laughs> symptoms. And so you're not even sure if that really is a symptom to look out for, um, you know, when it comes to coronavirus. So maybe a headache here, your nose is running and people are wondering, OK, do I have it or not? Is that really normal or is it, uh, you know, a challenge? And this is a normal response. So what this pandemic is doing to us is that it's raising our consciousness for self-monitoring. Yeah. So you wake up in the... Ordinarily, you wake up in the morning, you go through your normal routine, get out of the house if you have to go to work. Yeah. But this pandemic comes with a whole lot of symptoms. So you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you are checking, probably you're checking your throat, you're yeah. checking whether you have a um, sore throat, you have headache, because these are the symptoms that we know. Um, do you have a cold? So self-monitoring is rather on a high level at this moment. It's, yeah. it's a normal reaction that we are having because we want to assess, am I infected? So it's a risk perception um, that we are all going through. What yeah. will be problematic is we don't stop there and we start worrying about it when clearly there are no symptoms and yeah. we haven't been tested. That will be the problem. What about being in self-quarantine? Is that even worse? I mean, being in one place, being told what to do at what time and all of that? 
That is a major worry. Um, so quarantine brings along with it a lot of psychological effect. So when you're under self-quarantine, it means that you've limited your social contact. Yeah. Um, your routine is disrupted. And so it leaves a lot of room for boredom and frustration. Mm. And um, you may also be in a state of uncertainty because when you are under self-quarantine and you you haven't been tested yet, it leaves a lot of room for speculation yeah. in your mind. What if, you know, what if I have it? And so that puts us on edge and can increase um, our anxiety level. So what do I do at this point? I mean, generally, how do I protect myself mentally? And if I'm in quarantine as well, what do I do to protect myself? Okay. So there are a lot of things. So the anxiety, anxiety normally or typically is telling you that there's a threat, right? Yeah. And that things are out of control. Mm -hmm. So the best way to deal with this anxiety is to take the control back, your sense of autonomy. So for example, instead of um, just sitting down and waiting for things to happen, you have to consciously put in the plan, a routine, Okay. Or to take back that control that seems to be slipping out of your hands. So, for example, in the day, in the course of the day, what am I going to do? You create expectations for things you're going to be doing, and that will communicate back to your mind and your brains that you are re taking the control back, and right. that helps you, you know, to to calm yourself down a little bit because anxiety says you're out of control but yeah. putting routines back into place tells you that i'm regaining that control okay now um what can i do about addiction as well because if i'm stuck in one place i might get addicted to eating too much or doing something a little too much and there's also the issue of post-traumatic stress disorder stress how do i yes. control that Okay, so thank you. So I, I don't think you go into addiction right away. So <laughs> what is happening to the stress uh, stress response is that for some people it's fight. Fight means that they are busy, you know, going to buy things, preparing the house for eventualities. For others, they've been pushed extreme by the anxiety, so yeah. they, are, they are in a flight mode, mm -hmm. right? And then we have others who are in a freeze mode. They are immobilized. They can't do anything. Yeah. And so this can affect your appetite. It can affect your eating habit. It can affect your sleeping patterns. Mm. And so we, we have to mind all these patterns that might be affected. Okay. It will, it will, each individual will have a different response. And so being aware of how you are responding emotionally to this um, um, COVID-19 yeah. might be helpful, you know, to help you know, okay, I think I'm overeating, I'm oversleeping, and consciously putting plans in place okay. so that you don't prolong your stress, you know, response. That can be detrimental to your well-being. There was something you said that addiction doesn't happen immediately. So how long does it take and how would you even identify um, that you are getting addicted to something? Well, addiction... <laughs> the issue topic on you know uh, on its own so okay. addiction usually starts with um let's say something you like and it develops from a pattern or a habit okay. it becomes a habit and out of persistent habit it can get out of control so mm. the reason why i said that addiction is not going to be like today tomorrow i'm home and so i've developed addiction it's a process that might take a longer time than let's say two days or a week okay all right well doctor thank you so much uh for that advice there and we hope that we won't have to deal with many mental challenges after the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to Dr. Annabella Osei Tutu, and she's a psychologist at the University of Ghana. Now, quickly, just some information out there for you. And so I have just uh, read online, and this is from a, you know, a valid source, that the virus could stay for as long as 17 days. And this is after um, you know, scientists discovered that 
that the virus, they've discovered traces of the virus in cabins on infected cruise ship Diamond Princess more than two weeks after passengers left the cruise ship. Even though there is no trace as to whether it has really infected anybody, they are also advocating that you continue to wash your hands with soap under running water as often as possible. Use your sanitizers. Avoid uh, coughing and sneezing into the air uh, because even that, it stays in the air for about three hours. And so if anybody comes into contact with that, then there's a problem. And so stay away from uh, people two meters or more. There's more